Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Dark Matter Season 2, Episode 7. She's one of them now. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Dark Matter, so I'll have to give a spoiler warning for Dark Matter up to Season 2, Episode 7. If you haven't seen up to this point, you may not want to watch this video, otherwise some things may be spoiled for you. So this episode was pretty interesting. Uh, it was nothing earth-shattering that blew me away, but it was a nice little high story that was suspenseful and did push the overall story forward quite nicely as it brought up some really interesting revelations uh, while having some good character interactions. So this episode gets right into the story of the Razzik crew going after the corporate lady, uh, Alicia Renault, uh, who uh, had went after them, which I saw as a pleasant surprise because I was thinking that they would have a, like a couple of meandering episodes that would go on side plots of them preparing to take her on, but I'm glad that they didn't do that and just went right for it. I like uh, the season uh, that the show isn't wasting any time and just jumping straight into it like it only took them two episodes to break out of prison but at the same time they're not blowing through the storyline too quickly either so that's a very good thing so the episode begins with them going to uh, Tabor Kalchek, uh, the shady handler that screwed them over several times in the first season, who is played by David Hewlett, uh, who played Rodney McKay in Stargate Atlantis, and I'm sorry, but he's basically the same exact character. It's hard for me not to think of this guy as Rodney McKay. I mean, he's different in that he's a shady middleman in the crime world rather uh, than being a computer genius, but his personality, mannerisms, and just his whole overall behavior is exactly like Rodney McKay. Like the way he uh, pretended to be unconscious uh, when he wasn't, and how he was you know, annoyingly bothering the android about being locked up and feigning like medical conditions. It was like the writers thought Hey, what if Rodney McKay was the Raza's handler? It's been a while since I've seen season one, but it seems to me that Caltech came off way more like Rodney McKay in this episode than he did in the previous ones, but that might be because we just got to see more of him in this episode. So they decide to go on a heist uh, using the clone travel thingy to break into Alicia Renault's fortress in order to find out uh, what that card that she desperately wanted is. So 3, 4, and 5 go on the heist, and I love how 5 was included in this excursion because usually she's the one to stay behind on these sorts of things, but we saw in episode 2 of the season how much of a badass she can be, and indeed she did prove herself on this excursion. Uh, it's just the others are overly protected of her because of her age, but she was able to get by uh, them on the excuse that she wouldn't be in any danger as it would just be her clone. But I don't know if the others figured this out, but that actually wasn't the case as Alicia Renault actually could have killed her by sending a feedback through her pod and she nearly did. In fact, it's kind of a flaw that she didn't because at first she wanted to keep her alive so she could use her, but as soon as Five escaped, uh, Renault should have just killed her then because she no longer could use her. But don't get me wrong, I would have been outraged had she died, but I was legitimately worried uh, that she would die, so that made the episode all the more suspenseful. So once there, they discover what the card is and that it's a key to operating an experimental device that would augment an existing FDL drive to allow a ship to instantly travel to anywhere in the galaxy using wormhole uh, technology, uh, which they refer to as a blink drive. So they learn that the card requires an adapter in order to operate, so they go on a mission to steal the adapter and in the meanwhile, three and four get captured when they set off the alarm. And I love the scene where three and four are in a shootout and three tries to convince five that she needs to leave them behind and slip away. And I did find it quite funny that she was immediately convinced, uh, but you know, and took off immediately while three kept talking, trying to convince her not to worry about him, but she had already left a while ago. It was obvious she had already left, but that scene was still really funny. So after uh, Alicia Renault had uh, three and four tortured, five 
five simply kills their clones uh, in order to sever the connection which again adds a nice level of tension um, to the episode has when three and four awake they have no memory making it all up to five to get out of there otherwise they've gained nothing and of course, during that time, Renault locks onto the position of the Raza and sends ships to destroy it. And I love how the android simply and calmly finds a way to hold off their attack and then just fires back, disabling the ship's weapons long enough to retrieve the shuttle and get away. It was a really exciting sequence. So, uh, we also get a side story with Nyx and Devon as uh, Nyx uh, demands drugs and calls him out on being an addict when at first he refuses. Uh, so, I didn't really understand how Nyx was treated more like an outsider in this episode. For example, she wasn't there in the meeting when they were deciding who would go on this op. Has five and four decided that they would go, but they, they determined that two couldn't go and they didn't trust six enough to let him go. So by process of elimination, it had to be three. But what about Nyx? Why wasn't she there in that meeting? And six was, and they've clearly established that they trust her more than six. Plus, in this episode, she kind of acted like she didn't feel part of the crew. Whereas I thought it would have been, uh, you know well established by this point that she is however at the end of this episode when she decided to leave the ship two did seem against it and didn't want to lose her plus the whole title of the episode is uh she's one of them now which i think refers to nyx but uh yeah i'm not quite sure about that one um so yeah i just thought it was weird the way she seemed to be treated like an outsider in the first part of this episode so, getting to Devin the Doctor, uh, he was the one character who didn't seem well developed and in fact, when he along with the two others were introduced in the start of the season as part of the crew, I predicted that he wouldn't last long and would probably die at some point because he just didn't seem like a long term character. However, during the course of this episode, I actually changed my mind because I felt getting his backstory and the way it was told really fleshed him out and established him as a unique character in his own right. So I was now thinking he would become a permanent member of the crew, and then they kill him off. So it reminds me a lot of like shows like Lost or Game of Thrones as they tend to fully develop and flesh out a character right before they kill them off. I suppose it makes the death more powerful because you care more about this character, which is true. Uh, had they killed them off uh, before this episode, I would have cared a lot less about that. But uh, it also makes it more disappointing as you see the potential that they just squandered. And I really hope that Nyx finds out that he was killed and that they don't leave it with her thinking that he just abandoned her. His death was tragic enough and the added point uh, would just bum me out too much. And also, I really hope that Nyx hooks back up with the Raza and they don't just abandon her character as they need at least one of these new characters to stay and become a permanent character. And frankly, she was always the most interesting out of the three, but I don't think they will abandon her, but I am just a smidgen worried. So they seem to be expanding upon the android uh, and even though she no longer has the upgrade uh, they're showing the effect this experience has had on her and I think this is very interesting as she seemed obsessed on you know how snug 3's clothes were on him sort of hinting in attraction. I thought that was a bit silly though I kind of rolled my eyes at that scene but I did really appreciate a lot more her reaction to Rodney McKay and uh, when you know he kept bugging her about her upgrade she didn't get upset per se like her voice didn't raise or anything but he got she got like all up in his face indicating aggression uh, but in her typical android like way and I love that scene I love the subtleness to it but showing that there's something slightly different about her I thought it worked out really brilliantly so 
The interesting dynamic that this show sets up is all these different enemies that the crew has acquired are out hunting for them now, like the GA inspector who seems hot on their trail, Alicia Renault who's going to be even more angry now that they stole her adapter, and the Sears who killed Devon. So it's setting up a quite interesting chase dynamic for the remainder of the season. And of course, this is made even more exciting by the fact that the Raza crew now has this piece of technology that could make them unstoppable and they could use it to strike back against the corporations. So this is really set, uh, setting up something really exciting. So as for what happened when they used the blink drive at the end of the episode, what I'm about to tell you may be slightly spoilery if you haven't seen the promo for next week's ep episode, so you can skip this part if you don't want to hear about it. But judging by the promo for next week's episode, I say it looks very likely that the drive took them to a parallel universe or some sort of other dimension which is what I would I was thinking would happen at the end of this episode as they are indeed using wormhole technology uh, experimental and untested technology at that. So I kind of suspect uh, something like this would happen as soon as they decided to use it. And I predict that after next week's episode, this little glitch, uh, they figured out how to overcome it and will use this uh, blink drive properly, but that's just all my guess. So my rating for She's One of Them Now out of 10 is an 8 extremely good. Uh, this episode didn't completely blow me away. There was, there was nothing about it that I would deem like really awesome. But it was a solid episode that was really suspenseful and entertaining and pushed the characters and the overall story forward in all the right places, uh, making me really excited for the rest of the season. So that's it for my review of She's One of Them Now. Be sure to check back here every week as I review episodes of Dark Matter. Also be sure to check out my channel as I do many more videos on shows like Game of Thrones, Star Trek, Mr. Robot, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.